Hi people. So I finally finished my concertina, which I started out in November last year. I learned a lot in the process of making this concertina here, not least about how this medium can really tell a story in the ways that a single print or a regular book cannot. So in this video here, I'd like to share the process of making it and I'll chat about the thoughts going into each spread in the concertina. The whole project started out with a commission. I was called upon to do a graphical work illustrating a personal memoir of a diving experience in the 80s in Isla Mujeres in Mexico. So I was presented with this written memoir, sort of written in a poem, about this diving experience. And rather quickly I found out that I needed more space than just one page or one piece of paper to kind of illustrate the whole story. I did a bit of researching and then my eyes caught on to this thing called a concertina. I think the time spent on sketching took me at least as much time as it did for me to actually uh, doing the, the whole process of making the concertina. But that's just my approach, I think. I like to do a lot of sketching to, to really get into the core of the text and really uh, become satisfied with uh, the result. I also did a lot of mock-ups of the concertina to kind of get an idea of how the book would actually look like in the end, um, which means like, uh, how would the flow be in the story? How would the amount of text play together with the amount of illustrations? What should be on the front side and what should be on the back side and how should they interact? That was a bit about the general ideas. Let's go ahead and dive more deep into this book and I'll tell you a bit about the process and the thoughts about each spread. So this is what I consider to be the first page of the concertina. We have the headline here, which is where the dive took place. And then as we turn, we see a detail here. The sun continues to the next page. And um, this way, I think there's a nice entrance to the story. And we go from being above water in the air, so to speak. And then we go down uh, onto the water later. The first page here introduces a scene with the diving instructor called Hamenito and um, then we actually go straight into a line about manta rays, barracudas and stimes of fish so large that you could disappear in them. And why not illustrate that on this page? Well, I think it would be uh, become too crowded and I think the voice of the memoir should have some space, some time to set the scene here. Um, so here I've just tried to keep things simple and then as we flip here we get the illustration and here I choose to highlight the corals to really get some color going on here and to me Mexico is a colorful country so I wanted to have a very saturated feeling of, of the colors here, colors full of joy. Uh, we have a fish and then we have what I believe is one of the most spectacular fish uh, or creatures of the sea, uh, the manta ray. The dark color of it serves to, um, to make the, colors, the other colors even more saturated and vibrant. And then also detail here, we have the person of the memoir depicted down here in the corner. On the next double spread, you can tell that text and illustrations now uh, merge together because now the story is unfolding, the diving has begun, so here I think it works fine to have both. It reads here that little white and yellow fish are touching my hand and says hello to my diving glasses with a gentle touch. This is where I had to choose, should I illustrate this scene? I chose not to, as I wanted to have the diver's view on the fish and not focus too much on, say, drawing the, driving, the diving glasses. So the main focus here are on the fish, um, which also carries on the words, signs of the fish from the past page. But it is always difficult to choose because whenever you choose something, you have to leave something out. That's the, that's the premise. I had the same dilemma with uh, this page here where it says we continued into one large uh, fish universe after the other 
a cave with light, a box fish and many more creatures. And here I choose actually um, to illustrate the next piece of text, which is a starfish gives my hand a hug and floats onwards. And we can try to flip here and see how then the hand plays together with the starfish. And I thought that it was a quite powerful scene to end the story with. And a hand is always a very powerful um, motive. I kind of like the idea of the hand saying goodbye, the person saying goodbye to the ocean and kind of thanks for all the wonderful experiences. Taking a look at this spread here, I can talk a bit about the materials because all of these illustrations are actually made with a technique called the collagraphy, which is a printmaking technique. And you can actually find a video where I do all of this work uh, for this Constantina. After printing, I scanned them all and took them into Photoshop. And here I could clean some of the pieces where I thought mm, there was a bit too much texture, although I love texture, but maybe sometimes it was too messy. And also this is where digital techniques come in really handy. I could arrange, scale, rotate, and rearrange all the subjects to get the exact composition I was looking for. If we turn the concertina, we see the back page, which is essentially one long spread. We see a change in tone going from very dark uh, blue where the diving happens, and then changing into a light blue turquoise, illustrating the beginning of the ocean and therefore the beginning of the memoir of the book and all the adventures that will always lie ahead of a person who loves diving. Um, it's fading here up to the front page as I wanted to communicate the the thing about memory really where we can sort of dream ourselves way um, back to moments we really cherish and once we do that the events become quite clear. So this is a way for me to to really play with, uh, with the story and make things uh, sort of have a have a consistency. The spread of the back side was also scanned into my computer and then I could piece together all the pages with text and assemble a document using InDesign. And I can tell you that it took a while to figure out in collaboration with the guy I print my artwork at, especially how the spreads were to be placed in order to get a concertina that was printed on both sides on the right places and it took some brain gymnastics and also I remember that we worked a bit on getting the sun to, to match on both sides. But we did it, it was printed and then it was folding time and as you can tell there's a, an equal distance between each page so it's actually foldable to a nice little book. And. Um, before folding the concertina, I learned that it was essential that you make a very, very fine cut where you want to fold the page, at least when you're dealing with thick paper like this. By doing this, you get a much nicer and a much cleaner fold. I'm using the side of the scalpel and then I am not using very much pressure, just enough to sort of break the tissue of the paper. And then you fold and just enjoy this little thing that's come into the world. The genius thing about a concertina is the ways that you can really unfold and tell a story in experimental ways. Also, the concertina works on two levels, I think. It works as a book that you can flip through, that you can read in or just look at, um, look at the pictures in it. And also you can have it standing as an artwork in itself and something enjoyable to look at. And you can even flip, uh, flip it to the other side when you become bored with the other side. You certainly don't have to make it as complicated as I have. It is basically just a long piece of paper that you fold and then you can draw in it and you can write in it and then tell your own story. Thank you so much for watching. If you are sitting out there and you just got an idea of a story to tell in a concertina, feel free to share it in the comments. And all there is to say now is till next time, have fun drawing.